In an industry stuffed with marketing bullshit, empty promises, and shiny suited liars, one woman's had enough. She knows what it's like to have the wrong clients, no money, and no time for fun. But she also knows how to fix it. And on the Business for Superheroes show, she promises to tell the down and dirty truth about business, sales, and running away with the circus. Here's your host, Vicki Fraser. Hello and welcome to the Business for Superheroes show. I'm Vicki Fraser. This is my husband, Joe. Hello. And this is Noodle. Well, he was louder than that a moment ago. Yeah. Aw. Well, we, we are here in the Dingle, and I've got Noodle Fraser on my knee, and he's purring like a little engine. He's a good boy. He is a good boy. He's glad that we're back from Portugal. Yes. Mm. Yes. Um, so, Joe, what are you drinking today? I'm drinking leftover white wine from a few days ago. Oh, dear. That's not very on brand. I've got almost two-thirds of a glass. Mm. Is, that all the, is that all that was left? That's it. I don't know why it went back in the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I am drinking not beer. Mm. I'm drinking Bavarian um, premium original non-alcoholic beer, beer sans alcohol. And it's very nice. I like mm. it. Um, so yeah, we are drinking not beer and wine. And this is the Business for Superhero Show. Hello. 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 What are we talking about? Oh, we are talking about the most dangerous number. The most named, I had the most dangerous number. Yes, and we'll come back to that in a moment. But I think we should update people on... Um, the Dingle. Dingle update. Dingle update. We should have a little like glockenspiel or something for the Dingle update. Hang on. Hang on. You haven't got a glockenspiel. <laughs> oh, that was I like that. Let's go with that. Okay. Dingle update. Okay. We'll save that. Snip that out later and save it and we can insert it. Can you do that please, Pop Lego? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe ignore that. Um... <laughs> Anyway, so we're building a hen palace. Yes. Which is good because the my new office is going to go where the hens currently are so we residing. Spent, we spent all weekend. I, I kind of regret, digging a tremendous hole. Oh, tremendous hole! You know, you know when you just think this will take a couple of hours, and it turns out you are just hugely, hugely wrong. Yes, that's like everything in life. And actually, we could do the whole podcast about that because it's called the optimism bias. Mm. And I listened to a much better podcast than this one the other day <laughs> about it. I think it was free economics. So if what? you're if you're interested in the optimism uh, the optimism bias, go and listen. But it is it's, it's a thing. It's where you always think that you are going to get something done quicker than you do. Mm. If 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 in reality I had known what it was going to take to do what we needed to do, I would have. Um, what what are you fiddling with? It's picking up all the noises from everywhere. Why? Because when we had breaking bread was the last time. Oh. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Sorry, pod play. <laughs> <laughs> What's it supposed to be on? Um Well, that's a good question. Don't you see this is another good example of the optimism bias. Everything will be fine. Clearly it's not. Microphones could sit on some random setting from Portugal. Who yeah. the hell knows what this is gonna sound like? Well, I don't know. It'll, it'll sound amazing because professionalism play... at it peak that's what this will sound like oh, well yes we had a really i you'll like this joe we had a really nice comment on um on our most recent not our most ooh, oh no it's God. fine not on our most recent podcast um kelly said bloody love this every time your cats meowed in the background my cats were looking around the house to see where it came from hilarious you and joe work so well together thanks kelly thanks um, kelly kelly's just bought my book as well not my new book my old book business for superheroes and nice. it will hopefully be with you tomorrow kelly um thank you for listening that was that was episode 108 she commented on youtube because our episodes are on youtube um is my cunning plan cunning enough Nice. This is a very rumbly episode so far. Good lord. It's it's like we're just making it up. It is. I'm not doing that at all. Anyway. Um, anyway, Hen Palace. Hen Palace. If we'd known how much digging and levelling of land was required to do that job, I think we would have just rented a little digger. Would we? Yes. Okay. It would have cost us like 60 quid for the day and we would have done it in a morning. But how would we have got it up there? Upstairs. How would we have got it up there? Straight up the stairs. <laughs> With bravery and optimism, straight up the stairs. Optimism bias, you see. With, with optimism, it would have been fine, and then we would both have died, and it would just be terrible. We'd have to be very unlucky 
for both of us to die in a very small digger accident on the staircase. <laughs> okay. Um, is this the time to talk about the danger tower and the concrete cutter of death? Did we not talk about that on a previous one? I think one? we probably did, yeah. I, I cried. I stood at the bottom and cried while Joe was at the top of the danger tower of death with a concrete circular saw wobbling around and I was absolutely convinced that you were going to die. You have... Uh, I was crying. You have, you have a... <laughs> a bigger worry about risk than I do. Yes. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm very excited about my office being built, which is going to happen in the next two or three weeks. Uh, can't, whis- can't whiskey, it off in the background. whiskey is doing experiments in gravity just behind the laptop, and um, we are just back from breaking bread in Portugal, which was amazeballs. It was. It was really lovely. We, um, I spent. I mean, to be honest, I'm quite glad. We got when when we when it was over, so I could get out of my really tiny shorts. Because <laughs> it's tough being in those things for like three days straight. Also stinky. Yeah. Um, got... Yeah. So Joe and Berta were the pit crew, and it, you know they were amazing as always. We could not do it without you guys. Um, we... we we have a blast. I mean, we 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 are you know bringing people from airports and doing things and cooking and and whatnot, but we're also sneaking off for a cheeky beer every now and again and generally having a giggle. Yeah, which I'm really glad about because it's so much fun. So that was great. And then we spent a few days in Lisbon afterwards. Which um, is amazing. Lisbon is a beautiful city. I loved it. Mm. Really, I fell in love with Lisbon a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, go to Lisbon. It's fantastic. So should we talk about what we're going to talk about, do you think? Or I don't should we just know. keep rambling? I think we should just ramble. Like, beer scooters in Lisbon are a thing. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so this is really funny. And I nearly crashed my scooter because Joe, Joe made a funny which is rare. No, it's not. You're really funny all the time. Um, <laughs> Joe made it funny. And we found these scooters with an app called Lime. And you can just like top up your app with, say, 10 euros. And then you can scan your scooter. You, you just find a scooter standing around in the street somewhere. Yeah. And then and then you get on it and you scoot away. Yeah. And that's what made me laugh. Because um, if you've ever seen RuPaul's Drag Race, and if you haven't, you need to sort that shit out. Um, but yeah, at the end, they say, when they, when they do the... Um, the someone, lip sync for fails. your life. Someone fails and do the lip sync for your life. And then RuPaul says, Shantae, you stay to the winner and sashay away to the loser. And Joe waited until I was on my scooter and then went, I'm sorry, my dear, but I'm afraid it's time for you to scooter away. Maybe you had to be there, but it was hilarious. It was, yeah, it sounded, it was, yeah, it was better in real life. Yeah. So anyway, this week we are talking about <laughs> the... <laughs> private trapeze lesson I had this afternoon oh, okay. and the run through for my competition because I am in the finals of the UK Aerial Performance Championship in Yay. the Instructor Open category on August 24th, 2019. Mm-hmm. And I am just beginning to get to peak stress. Nice. Um, and today I cried in my private lesson. Oh no. So I have not, been, I've actually not been, this is going to sound like an excuse, but it genuinely isn't. I have not been feeling great for the last couple of days. I've had a bit mm. of a dodgy belly and I really felt sick earlier. And so I was like, oh, I'm not even sure this is going to be a good run through, which is not the attitude to go into it with because as soon as you think that, you're like, oh, well, it's not going to be very good and then you're not very good. Um, so anyway, I I did my I did my run through um, with Ed watching. Ed's my coach. Um, hi, Ed. Hi, Ed. And he, yeah, I mean, it was okay. Um, but I, I'm having a problem. I've got this, okay, so there's this move called a penny drop. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you've ever done gymnastics, you'll know what a penny drop is. Um, but you basically imagine that you're hanging off a, vert- a, a horizontal bar with your knees. Basically, it's called hocks. So bar hang- behind your knees. Bar behind your knees, and you're hanging upside down. And what you do is you beat a couple of times. So that's like swing and th- thrash yourself forwards and backwards a couple of times. Yes, swing and forwards and backwards a couple of times, and then on the forward up swing, you want to look up as high as you can, and then just let go with your legs. Right. That has been my nemesis move for ever since I started trapeze, which is about five or six years ago now. What, what happens shortly after you let go with your legs? Oh, you land on your feet, if all goes well. Or if it doesn't go well, um, and there's a mat down, sometimes you hit the floor with your face, which I have a very hilarious video of me doing that on YouTube if you want to go and have a look on my YouTube channel. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's... it's and, and you just... you just It's actually... It's not really a drop, it's just... It's not much... It's one of those things that looks really impressive, but when you've learned how to do it, you're like, oh, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Because there's not an awful lot of... It's a dynamic move, but it's not... 
kind of as long as you let go at the right point then physics takes over and you end up the right way up yeah you just land on your feet and if if the, the lower the bar the more difficult it is to do because you have yeah. to get a, a, a bigger upswing and faster spin yeah we don't have an awful lot of ceiling height at our studio so it's, it's quite low um so anyway, that's that's the move that I've been working on, and it is in my routine, and it goes really well in my routine because um, there's a certain part of the when the music kind of picks up and it's kind of rah, and th- this penny drop goes really well in there, and it's um, just after quite a complicated sequence of hanging from my feet and then doing some barrel rolls forwards and backwards, and then yeah, all sorts okay. of all so, sorts of stuff. So what happened? So the thing is, this move goes really well sixty percent of the time. If I can't get it so that it goes really well 100% of the time, it's like we're going to take it out. And I was like, but I don't want to because I've been working on it for so hard, for so long, and it just looks so great. And the problem with it is, if there's a little bit of a spin on the trapeze, it completely screws up the beats because I don't know, if if you think about if you're spinning, if you're going forwards and backwards, suddenly everything just... It sort of accelerates and decelerates with the spin and it all gets a bit... And it wobbly. makes everything wobbly and ter- absolutely terrifying to um, do the penny drop, basically, because, mm-hmm. um, yeah, if you leave a foot behind, you're going to hit the floor with your face. Not fun. It's okay if there's a mat there. Not so much fun if it's just the wooden floor. Mm-hmm. So, and we were talking about it and he said, um, you know, he was like, I'll give you a week. You've got another week to work on this. If you haven't got it down pat, we're taking it out. We're going to replace it with something else. Um, at which point I started blinking furiously <laughs> and looking in another direction. And he was just like, are you getting upset? And I was like, no, I'm fine. <laughs> and he was like, you are getting upset. Don't get upset. And then he pointed out something that's really important. Um, this routine is really good. I've worked really hard on it and it is better than just that one move. Mm-hmm. That one move is not important. It's important to me. It's not important to the success of the routine. Sure. And it was just a really good point, I thought, because just because it's my nemesis move and it's taken me years doesn't mean that I get to basically crap on the whole performance just... Just to fit it in. Just to fit it in, because if it goes horribly wrong, the worst that can happen is that I genuinely will hurt myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, even if it, if it goes wrong and the worst doesn't happen, it's going to just look crap. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's, and it just got me thinking that the number one is the most dangerous number. Really, it's like that. I can't base a routine on one move. Sure. And you can't. And you can't. You can't sacrifice the whole routine because of one shaky part of it. No, and you've got to have a backup plan, you know. And and so now I have got a backup plan. There's a couple of things I can do. They're not as impressive. Uh, they're not as dynamic. They're strength moves rather than mm-hmm. dynamic moves, and I, I don't think they'll fit as well. So it's a really good incentive for me to spend the next week working really hard on it. But you can do those. But I can do the other moves, and that's another thing. Actually, this is. You know, it's your fallback plan. It's your fallback plan. But this is what I've always been told. If you're not 100% sure of a move, don't put it into a routine. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, I am 100% sure of it without all of the other stuff that goes around it. Unless you whatever, spin. Unless I generate spin, yeah. So it's, it's difficult. But Ed's totally right. Mm-hmm. I will be gutted if I have to take it out, but I'm not sacrificing the routine just for that one move. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, and it got me thinking about business too, because... No, one is the most dangerous number anyway. You don't want to be relying on one in your business. So if you only have one big client and something happens to that big client, yeah, what's going to happen to your business? You know, I've, I've seen businesses fold. Wasn't there a story a few years ago and um, there was a company that used to supply Marks and Spencers with... I can't remember what now. I think it was... Big Pants. It might, it might well have been Big Pants, actually. Um, it, was, it was something to do with clothing and... Then, for whatever reason, Marks and Spencer's purchasing changed, or the you know they they changed suppliers. They stopped stocking it. This company, that was the only thing they did. Yeah. Supplied Marks and Spencer's with these big pants, and the company folded because what else was it going to do? And it, yeah, it just it just was crazy. But yeah, I mean, what else is dangerous? Um, the number one in business, one supplier, I guess. Yeah, one supplier, one customer, only one person who can do the thing. Hmm. That's a really good point, actually. Even if you're on your own, even if you're like me and you don't really have a you know a, a team and mm. lots of employees, it's still really important that you write down what you do and how you do it because you, other people should know what you do. Yes. Do you guys do that at your at your? Yeah, we well, yeah we we make sure that we've got more than one person with with 
whatever skill it is that we're acquiring or whatever product it is we're developing, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And also one platform is super dangerous as well. Sure. I mean, certainly if you're, you know, living your business on Facebook or something, that's really risky because you have no power over that. Yeah. And uh, something, this is topical actually, because I think Instagram went down for a few hours over the weekend. Okay, if you say so. Um, apparently. So, and there was one, and I read this in, a, in an email, I can't remember who wrote the email, but somebody was talking about it. And Instagram had gone down and this person had taken to Facebook and was wailing and gnashing their teeth over my whole business is on Instagram and her business is purely how to get stuff on how to do stuff on Instagram that's all she does which is incredibly dangerous it's not only is she only selling on Instagram her entire business model is based you know dependent on Instagram her whole income is dependent on Instagram yeah that's even worse than than just marketing yourself on Instagram um but you know regardless of, of what she's doing if if you're only if you're like, oh, Instagram's my thing, that's what I do. Yeah. Which isn't a great place to be selling or, stuff or, anyway. Or, or LinkedIn Facebook. or Facebook or wherever it may be. If, if you've got one channel. Yeah, and then it goes down for a, a day. How much how much revenue are you going to use? Even worse, what if they can your account, which they are have every right to do? Yeah. You know, they're private companies. They don't owe you anything. You're the you're the product, not the not the not the customer. So it's it's really, really super important to have more than one platform. You shouldn't be doing all of your advertising on social media anyway. That's just stupid. Hmm. Um, it's not the right place. It's social media is not the right place to sell. So you need to be thinking, you know, where are you going to get people from? Email lists, online advertising, offline advertising, direct mail, article marketing. There's a million things that you can you can be doing. Not all at once, but you want to be doing more than one thing. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise you are just going to be screwed if one of those things goes wrong. You might have a main thing, like email marketing is my main thing, but it's not the only thing I do. I think email marketing is one of the things that's possibly a little less risky because I don't think there's anybody who can stop you doing it. Well, no, there is. You can get blacklisted if you... Um, so yeah, for, if you're spamming like crazy. Yeah, so if you, if you break the law, you'll be in trouble. Um, with, I guess with companies like Infusionsoft and Entreport, it's difficult to break the law because they have very strict rules because their their business depends on you know, people keeping the rules. But if you have terrible deliverability rates and your address, you know, you know, your email address, your domain gets blacklisted by people, even if even if they're still getting through with um Infusionsoft or whatever, you know, you're still you're still gonna be put on this list where it's like, oh this, you know, you're gonna straight into the Gmail junk folder, that yeah. kind of thing. So it's it's still, yes, less risky than just having one other thing, but you've still got to be careful. There are, there are many ways for it all to go tits up. Mm-hmm. Um, but here's a way that, that the number one is is not dangerous, um, having one specialty. And that doesn't mean you don't do anything else, but that just means that you have one thing that you are really well known for. Okay. Uh, so you want to niche, super niching. Pick the one thing that you want to be really well known for that you're better at than anybody else. So for me, that's um, books. Books. Teaching teaching authors. Teaching business owners how to write books. And the thing that makes me different is that I've got this background in direct response marketing, which most people in my, my industry don't have. Mm-hmm. And you know, they might be they might be great at what they do, but they don't have that background of understanding how to write sales copy and how to, you know, how to put together sales campaigns and things like that. So you gotta you gotta figure out what one thing that you are best at and make that your thing, and then make sure you have plenty of clients and leads and platforms and that you're not basing everything on the number one nice yeah so reasonable yeah so that's pretty much it just a short and sweet podcast tonight bit rambling at the start tighter at the end yeah much like your face thank you (laughs) um so joe what's the what's the takeaway um i guess it's 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 don't don't hang your whole plan on one thing um and, you know, your whole world will go up in flames if that one thing fails. Yeah. You know, if you've got your marketing out on six different platforms and one of them goes down for a week or they throw you off or whatever, you've still got five others that work. Yes. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Um, so, what are we talking about next week, Joe? Who the heck knows? <laughs> um, I, was, I was thinking about this earlier, actually, and I was thinking about what, what we talked about recently. Have we done How to Write with Humour? I don't know. No, don't think we have. Should we do a bit of that? 
Okay. Let's do a bit of that. Let's let's talk about let's talk about comedy writing and, and being funny and, and crikey. And and should you and, and all the rest of it. That could be quite fun. Might be you know, total car crash, I don't know. <laughs> um yeah, so next week we'll be talking about being funny. Being funny. Or not. Whoa. There you go. It's in Decision there, made. Then. Yeah. That's what that is. So what's going on with Superheroes and my book is done. Book finished. Book finished. Has it gone to the printer? Has not gone to the printer yet. It's going to the printer uh before the end of the month. Okay. Um I am putting together my new website as we speak. Nice. Like right now. That's me making it. And yeah, if you listen to every episode, email me with your postal address and I will send you a special super fun gift. Nice. And if you like this podcast, what do people need to do? Subscribe, give it five stars, tell their friends, share it. Yes. And yeah, or yeah, just share it. VickyFraser.com podcast. Yeah. Forward slash podcast. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Joe. No worries. We'll be back next week. We'll have a bit more energy because it's pretty late. <laughs> <laughs> and um, be good. And if you can't be good, don't get caught. Right. See ya. Bye. <laughs> Like what you've just heard? Tell your colleagues. Tell your friends. Send them to www.businessforsuperheroes.com slash podcast.